So hi, hello, welcome back to the Chan. Today I'm going to be doing a video all about semester and see how I'm preparing. Even though it's a couple months away, I still, you know, I'm so excited. I just want to get started with the prep. So if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Daisy. I'm 21. I'm a senior at the University of Southern Maine and I also did a year abroad at Kingston University in London. So if you're interested in study abroad and not just semester at sea, I'll definitely link the playlist of videos from my time in London in the information cards and the description down below if you want to check it out. I'm a dual degree student, so I'm a first semester senior in my communications degree and I'll be taking communications courses on semester at Sea Voyage. And then I'm a second semester senior in my marketing degree with my minor in French language. So I'll be graduating this spring with my first of two degrees. So that's pretty cool. So I'm sailing on the fall 2021 voyage of semester at Sea. I was originally supposed to be on the fall 2020 voyage, canceled. And then I was gonna be on spring 2021, which canceled so now i extended my second degree so i can have the experience because honestly semester c is my ideal learning environment and i i can't not do it you know what i mean so when i'm filming this it's march 16th and i think that my voyage begins september 8th or september 9th or something but there are some things that i'm doing to prepare and i'm gonna talk a little bit about that today Ooh, that was so cringy. Okay. If you're interested in semester C videos, definitely subscribe because I will be vlogging my entire voyage. You are not ready for this content. I'm so excited to make it for you guys. So I have done a little bit of shopping for semester at sea and also downsizing my closet. So I've recently gone through my closet and gotten rid of a bunch of stuff, given it to my sisters, listed it on my Depop. But I wanna show you guys some of the stuff I got. So first of all, I picked up some swimsuits from Victoria's Secret Pink and it came with this bag because I spent over a certain amount of money. This is the swimsuit I got from Pink. It's just a high-waisted, red bikini and then the top is a one shoulder so that's really cute and i really like the red color i also got a bunch of new swimsuits from dip and daisies but that's gonna be a whole nother video and then also while we're talking about swimsuits this lovely brand called nani swimwear sent me over one of their swimsuits i think they're based in utah they make more like sporty and conservative styles which i really like so first thing i got is this navy blue top it's like a cross top and then it has this really cute knot in the back Oh my god, I'm obsessed with it. It has removable padding. I'm gonna show you the inside because honestly, the inside of the bikini is what makes the bikini the most comfortable. So that's what the inside looks like. It has the removable cups right here. It has this band that kind of reinforces it. So it's double banded, so it keeps you up. So I'm not gonna like fall out the bottom of it, you know? I got the side tie bottom in the same color and these are so, so cute. Um, and just for reference, I got the size small bottoms and the medium top, but super cute. Ties on the side. You can tie it as tight or loose as you want. It has a really good amount of coverage in the back. This is a nice family friendly, sporty swimsuit. I could definitely wear this doing water sports. I love that they preach all bodies are bikini bodies. They're all about empowerment for women. And almost half of their suits are made from recycled plastic water bottles, which we absolutely love to see that sustainability. That is definitely a step in the right direction. And the cherry on top of the cake, they're a completely women-run company. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We absolutely love to see it. I'll leave their links down below. This isn't sponsored, by the way. They just kindly, kindly gifted me this. And I'm so excited to be wearing this all summer and during semester at sea. Last but certainly not least, I got this skirt from Hollister this is also probably gonna get a lot of wear this summer but it's like a midi skirt and it has a little slit in it so that's very very cute look at how cute this pattern is it's daisies I'm Daisy so that's kind of how I've started to pack for SAS. I talked about in my packing for study abroad video a little bit about SAS and I'm bringing my baboon to the moon go bag but I'll definitely be bringing my go bag as my carry-on and then I don't know if I'm gonna get like the rolling duffel bags yet simply because I don't want to buy them and I don't really mind bringing hard shell suitcases and then just having them in my room like I really honestly don't care so I think I'm just gonna use the hard shell ones and hope for the best. Eh. I don't know, if you're a SAS alum and you're watching this and you have any tips for me, comments, baby. Leave them in the comments. I've been doing this 70-20-10, which is a very aggressive saving strategy the way I'm doing it. So basically you section your income into chunks of 70%, 20%, and 10%. So what I do is I put 70% of all of my income in my savings account, and I actually have two bank accounts, and one of them like doesn't have a debit card or anything associated with it. So I put the 70% in my savings account that is not attached to my debit card, so there's no way I can actually spend it unless I link something to my bank account, which I'm not going to do. So I put 70% of my income 
income in my like private savings, I like to call it. 20% of my paychecks or my streams of income go into my checking account for spending money. And then 10% goes into my savings account that's associated with my debit card, kind of as an emergency fund. I'm really lucky that I live at home with my parents. I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay for groceries. And I can totally acknowledge my privilege there, but I'm really lucky that I get to save 70% instead of spending 70% on like my utilities or my rent or anything. Okay, so I just went and got my laptop. I'm gonna show you my Amazon wish list. Oop. So I have an Amazon wish list that I send to friends and family. I'll put it in the description just so you can see what it is. I don't expect you to get anything for me on it. So I have just like really random things like those keychain carabiner clip things. I need a clipboard because that's like a semester at sea essential. And then I need like laundry stuff because if you don't know, the laundry is pretty expensive on semester at sea. It's like $8 for a bag. Um, so a lot of people do their own laundry. So I wanna get one of those portable like laundry cleaner things and then I'll need like soap for that too. And then I also wanna get some like electronic organizer things because since I do a lot of like social media stuff, um, I'm gonna need to bring like my batteries and my cords and stuff. And so I don't want that to get like all jumbled up, you know? So I wanna have like a dedicated bag for that. And then always packing cubes are essentials, uh, just like travel adapters. And then I really want a life straw water bottle. It's like one of those water bottles with a filter in it. And that's my whole list, my whole wish list. And since I studied abroad, I already have a lot of the things that I need for this um, program. Okay, so something I'm not sure about. First of all, I need to find my passport. Uh, don't know where that is. I think it's in my car. So since I studied abroad a couple years ago, I did a lot of traveling. So I have a lot of stamps in my passport and I got a new passport pretty much right before I studied abroad. So it was like pretty much empty. But for semester C, they recommend having like 10 empty pages and I don't think I have 10 empty pages. So I've already gone through four passports. It's embarrassing because my first passport I lost slash got stolen in France, which leads to my second passport, which I had to buy which is the one that I got at the Paris Embassy. And that one only lasted a year because it was a temporary passport. So I had to get my third one, which is the one that I just got before I studied abroad. And so I guess I don't have four, I have three. And then obviously the one I had when I was little, but like since I've started traveling, I've gone through three passports. So I really don't wanna make it four because passports are really expensive and Oh, it's just so annoying, but I might have to get a new one. And if I got a new one, I'd get like the big one. Oh my gosh, this is important. I actually need to check in with my study abroad advisor at my school to make sure I can still like study abroad this fall because if my school doesn't approve the program, it's like a waste of money to do the program. So I'm gonna have to check with my advisor to see if I can still go. And if they say no, I'm gonna be like, I'm going. So you're gonna have to approve me either way. <laughs> And then I also want to check the classes. I'm going to do that right now. So semester C has been having a lot of classes be dropped because professors that were going to bring their families are dropping out because they can't bring their families now. I don't think they're going to be able to get vaccinated and everyone that goes on the voyage has to be vaccinated. So if we don't have communications courses, we are going to be having a problem. So let's just make sure. Okay, cool. So one of the ones that got taken off just got put on, like put back on. So I'm planning on taking intercultural communication and international mass communication. And then obviously you still need to take um, global studies. That's three classes. And I'm just gonna take an elective. I don't know what I'm gonna take yet. I'm planning on just taking like hopefully an easy class, like 200 level if there are any open. So yeah, I'm taking two communications classes, hoping and praying that these professors don't drop out because a lot of professors have. This whole trip is just a fingers crossed kind of thing, you know? So the last thing I'm gonna do today for you guys is go to the scholarship portal because that is something that I've been doing recently. So I'm on their scholarships page, their scholarships and deadlines thing. I talked about a couple videos ago, I did my um, application for student blogger and I want that so bad like so bad, but I already applied for that one. That's the only one I've applied to so far because I had a problem with my FAFSA because I wasn't planning on doing a FAFSA for this year, but since I'm doing semester C, I have to do one to like be able to apply for scholarships. Now my FAFSA is processing and um, it just has like a thing of all the scholarships on their scholarships website. So I'm just gonna tell you the ones I'm applying for. So first one I'm applying for is need-based, which honestly I don't think I'm gonna get that much because my FAFSA, 
I don't get much money from FAFSA, let's just say that. So those are between $250 to $10,000. Merit grant is between $250 to $205,000. And then that's like, for anyone that has over a 3.0 GPA, which I do. Um, student assistant plus student vlogger, which I really hope I'm gonna get, that's 4,000, which would be, oh, so amazing. And they also have a new program, like student content creators program, and it said there's a grant associated with that too, but it's not listed on this website. Alumni support scholarships, I think you can apply to even if you're not related to someone that's an alumni or if you're not alumni yourself, but those are between 500 and $10,000 and I really want one of those too. <laughs> and then I don't think I'm really eligible for that many other ones because there's a lot of ones for minorities and obviously I am white bread with mayo over here so I'm not eligible for the predominantly black institution or Hispanic serving institution scholarships or minority serving institution scholarships. It's fine. And then I think those are the only other ones I'm eligible for. That's so great that like certain schools give specific scholarships for a semester at sea. Mine doesn't but that's really cool for people that are eligible for those. So I'm gonna be trying to get as much scholarship as possible obviously and then other than that, Miss Sally May will be owning my soul for the foreseeable future. But according to their website, it says 60% of our voyagers receive some form of financial aid, which I'm hoping to be a part of that. Thank you very much. Even if it's just like $500, I'll be thankful for whatever I get because I don't have any money. So that's everything I'm doing to prepare for semester at sea, fall 2021. I'm so excited as long as this fall happens, which I honestly think it's going to, I think it's gonna happen. So we're gonna manifest in the comments. Um, I'd like everyone that watched this far to comment SAS is happening, just to put the energy out there, you know? I hope you subscribe, follow along my semester at sea journey. The content is going to be unreal. I don't think you guys are ready for it. I'm not even ready for it, honestly, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Follow me on Instagram. I'll be making semester RC TikToks too, so go follow me there, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.